the message I'm presenting to you. Um, in the palace would uh, mean something to us because, you know, God has called us to be uh, his royal priesthood. Amen? Amen? He called us to be his kings, his representatives. Um, so we have to uh, learn a few things uh, that could really help us with our journey in with God. Amen. How many of you believe you are the citizens of the kingdom of God? Amen. Yes. You know, when we don't know how our kingdom operates, our operation is 
minimum. We are diluting our operation if we don't know where we belong, how we should be operating. Amen? Amen. You know, when we don't understand, it is very important to understand many other things in our lives. Especially in Christianity, in the Christendom, in God's kingdom, you need to understand how things work. Otherwise, our effectiveness is diluted. God wants us to have a life that impacts. You know, Bible, Bible says, uh, they that uh, know the Lord, in the book of Daniel, the Bible says, they that know the Lord shall carry out great exploits. Amen? Amen. Amen? Great exploits. Imagine that. You know, have you ever been a, uh, have you ever uh, experienced what exploitation is? Think of that for a moment, just that one word. And he says, great exploits. Those exploits are not going to be against people, but against the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Imagine you bankrupting the kingdom of darkness. Amen exploiting him what the devil meant for harm glory be to God what the devil meant for harm you exploited him Amen. imagine that yes. when the sickness is trying to come into your life when the disturbance is coming into your life when the depression is coming into your life you exploit them Amen. imagine that what you th thought as a threat is now something you are exploiting Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it is. What you thought was a, something that is going to take down your life, now you have the strength in you Amen. to take it down. Amen. Not only take it down, to exploit it. Amen. Right. Because the Word of God clearly says, they that know the Lord shall carry out great exploits. Amen. Amen. So um, when we understand... Uh, what we are, who we are, what we can be. Whenever uh, I, I really want us to uh, start looking at the things, when things are coming negative or against us, don't just give in to them. Don't just surrender to them. Amen. Remember this thing: exploit them. That is what Jesus did. We are celebrating here today, this season. What did he do? He exploited death. Amen. And that's why he comes out and says, Hey, death, where is your sting? Amen. Hey, that's my boss, man. Amen. I do not mind following him. Amen. I do not mind following him because Amen. the biggest threat for mankind is death. He exploited it like a joke. He comes out of it even glorious. Amen. Thank you, Lord. When he was resurrected, he wasn't just resurrected. He was resurrected in the glory of the Lord. Amen. I don't know if that is not exploitation, what else is. Right. He comes out and he looks at death. Hey, I thought you got the biggest thing. Where is it? <laughs> now, when our boss man have done that for us, when our Lord have done that for us, he was never subjected to death. Yet, he subjected himself to death. Right. Amen. He, he who knew no sin became sin. Mm -hmm. He subjected himself to that death. For what? For you and me. Amen. He subjected himself to the matters of mankind. So he can show what exploitation is. He can give us the keys. To the kingdom. Amen. Against that, the gates of hell shall not prevail. Amen. We have the keys. Yes. Can somebody shout, we have I the keys? Glory be to Take it. Take ownership of it. I have, I have the, the keys. keys. These keys are not any joke here. Amen. Exploitation keys. You go to the places that couldn't open, you open them. Amen. You go to the places, to the dead ends, and you go with the key, open them. Yeah. Amen? Amen. You know, we always want to declare God is about to open doors. 
Let me tell you something. You got the keys. Amen. Amen. You got the keys. Behold, I give you the keys. Amen. 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 He gave you the keys so you may go open the doors. Amen. Dead end is becoming a dead end because you haven't used your keys. Right. Amen. It is not because it is dead end. It is not because it is a stubborn stain. You never used OxyClean. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's no stubborn. There is nothing that is out there that can stop you. Stop us from moving forward. That's true. God will make a way where there is no, no way. way. When you seem or when, you, when it looks like there is no way, you know what? There is a wall that can be opened with your keys. Amen. Amen. There is a wall that can be opened with. I like that movie so much, The, the Lord of the Rings yes. movie. They come and they are facing a wall. Mm -hmm. It looks like a wall. They can't open the door. Because the key is right in front of them. Until they spoke the key, the door didn't open. Mm -hmm. Some of you might be looking at me, what is this Lord of Rings? Is it, is it, is it, is it a preaching there, <laughs> Lord of the Rings there? No, it's a very good uh, illustration. It just looks like there is no way there. It doesn't have a door and a knob and all those kinds of things that we are used to. <clears throat> you know, we are right now in entering into different technologies where your doors are automatically locked, your, your house is lit up automatically, you clap hands, it open, it, you can turn things on and off with your phone and all those kinds of things. We are adapting to it. And we consider, man, we are in an advanced technology. Guess what? We serve a God who is far, far advanced than us. Amen. Amen. Let's use his technology. Yes. Let's use his technology. Absolutely. The biggest thing that he has given to us is keys. Kingdom keys. Amen. Kingdom authority. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's why palace matters for us. Because the authority that we got is not a human authority. Let me be very honest here. I love this nation. I pray for this nation. But the keys that God has offered are not even in the Constitution. That's, right. That's true. Amen. They're not even in the Constitution. They are in the kingdom. Amen. They are in the kingdom. We need to look at the kingdom. We need to look at the king. We need to understand the palace for us to understand how we should live. What does the word of God say? My people die for the lack of knowledge. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. That's why God commands us in all you're getting, get understanding. In all you're getting, get what? Understanding. We got to understand. We got to comprehend. The problem with us is we are just, just, just going and going. Understanding what happens, understanding. Understanding digs roots. Otherwise, we are just floating. We are just his tossed is what the word used in the Bible. I like King James' words when it uses some of these Words seems like fancy. <laughs> Trust me, they were the common words then. <laughs> but you, you are getting tossed in all these different directions. Because we lack understanding. When we gain understanding, what happens? We are digging roots. We are digging ourselves into it. We are laying a solid foundation. That's why Bible commands us. I don't say recommends. Bible commands us. In all you're getting, get. Understanding. In all you're getting, get what? Understanding. Come on. In all you're getting, get what? Understanding. When you come to the word of God, you don't entertain. You get understanding. Mm -hmm. 
When we come into the presence of God, we don't get entertained, we get understanding. Amen. Oh, I, it felt so good. No, 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 let's gain some understanding. Let's gain some understanding. His presence, His glory, His <laughs> manifestation, His word, His, His church, no matter what is coming into our lives, they all offer something which is understanding. And it doesn't say it'll fall into your lap. It says you got to get it. That's true. Get it. Get the understanding. Get, get seems a little violent for me. Because we, you know, whatever, uh, 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 he, you know, we have the saying, we say, oh, he's a keeper. She's a keeper. Why? Because she's a go-getter. He can go get it. He can make it happen. You know, if you are a go-getter, your job is secure, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If it is working for the secular world, why do you think you, you can leave it at the door when it comes to the kingdom of God? Let's go get it. We don't have to get, the, get, get this certification, that certification, there are none of those things. We can get understanding. Amen. Because the house is built with understanding, isn't it? Amen. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Those are the main things that makes the house. Amen. <laughs> when you are getting understanding, you are building a house that will stand, that is built upon the rock. Amen. The winds can blow at it. The storms can hit it. And it still be standing tall. That's you. That's you. Amen. Amen. Go with me to the book of Exodus, 12, second chapter, please. Exodus, second chapter, starting from verse 1 through 10. <clears throat> and a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, but the, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. Look at the floating device they invented. Leave it to women, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but look at this. This woman didn't hold the son because... He was Moses. Moses wasn't even named by them. The mama didn't, didn't save him or risked her life because he was Moses. Think about that sometimes. Oftentimes we over-spiritualize everything. We over-spiritualize everything. In here there is nothing spiritual in all reality. Mama saw the child and saw him being beautiful. And there was a decree against him by the Pharaoh, by the king, saying any, two, any, any boy child should be murdered. So when this is happening, the mama saw this and she was like, oh, he's beautiful. I need to fight for him. Is there anything worth fighting in your life? Or are you seeing something beautiful that you can fight for? You know, the, we have the saying that says, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <clears throat> the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That means there is something that, that attracts us, that captivates us. God is in it. God tries to even use those senses of us to try to direct us toward his will. Amen. You know, this is a very gray area. I'm being very careful when I present this. Because somebody might say, oh, I had a love for this and go after sin. That's why we got to be careful. But in here, he, the, the, the mother didn't, saw the child and he was beautiful. And she hid him three months. 
Imagine that. A mother risking her life, her existence, for a three-month-old child. That's an inspiring mother for me. Amen. Not the mother who looks for her career about the child. I'm sorry. Because the mother shapes children. Mother inspires. Amen. In spite of her uncomfortable conditions, she still bears the child. She still fights for it. That's mother. Amen. We cannot rewrite motherhood talking about achievements. The biggest achievement for motherhood is what? Having a child. If there is no child in the picture, there is no motherhood. <clears throat> but once she, uh, three months after that, go ahead, please. And his sister stood afar off. To no, 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 I, I want to read the third verse again, please. But when she could no longer hide him, she took when, when, when she could no longer hide him. You know, the, the, the process of God's vision in our lives will always be like that. There is a time you can hide it. There will come a time you cannot hide it any longer. Mm -hmm. We have to bring it to the public. There is a purpose in your life that God has put in you. There is a vision in your life that God has put in you. It is not for you to hide it. Mm -hmm. It is for it to go out. There are many people we see, they have great visions, they have great desires to do things for the Lord, but they have never let it go. Mm -hmm. They have never let it out. Mm -hmm. That's true. And because it has become too big, many people are worried about their life. The many people have given up on many things in their lives because it grew too big for them. Can somebody say growth is happening? Growth is happening. Amen. And, and this is, this is the, the best creative thinking that she has come up with. She creates a boat for her son. A three-year-old that could float perfectly. Imagine that. A three-month-old. Imagine that. What kind of a nose that woman need to have to let go of a three month old? Talk about a risk. Talk about a risk. Keep going, please. She took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked along the river side. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him, and the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called his name Moses, saying, Because I drew him out of the water. Amen. Amen. Now, <laughs> is Moses lucky here? Yeah. Moses seemed like, uh, it seems like, oh my goodness, look at that fortune that he has. You know, at the time when everybody is dying, this, this one child survived. At the time, everything is going down, this one child was floating. Mm -hmm. And at this time, everything is uh, enslaved, this, this child is becoming the prince. 
And when we look at it from the optics of it, it looks like, wow, what an amazing story. <clears throat> what an amazing rescue. What an amazing show of God's power or God's favor. Is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. It wasn't the mercy of the queen that made him become the prince. Moses belonged to the palace. I want us to understand this thing. It wasn't the mercy of the people or the mercy of the things around us. It is not some lucky shot for Moses. Moses belonged in the palace. How can you say that? Let's back down a little bit. Uh, just a little bit. Let's a little bit. Uh, go to the first chapter, sixth verse. Starting from sixth verse. And Joseph died, all his brothers and all that generation. Where did Joseph die? Where did Joseph die? Egypt. Egypt. Uh-uh. In the palace. He was in the palace. Don't forget, he was running Egypt. He was next to Pharaoh, isn't it? David. I mean, Joseph. Okay. Joseph. Joseph was running the palace. Right, right. He was running the whole kingdom. He was in the palace. He belonged to the palace. Where did Israel belong to? It belonged to the palace. Right. They weren't showing mercy to him. They were actually taking away what belongs to them. Mm. Right. Rightfully, it was their place. Are you with me here? Mm -hmm. Do you see the abuse here? Yet the devil wants you to believe I am letting you. I'm only letting you. <coughs> But here, God is giving us a clear picture saying, hey, 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 it is yours to begin with. Amen. Isn't that what the... Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's... Oh, um, uh, I'm going to come back here. Let's go with me quickly uh, to the book of Luke. Oh, sorry, uh, Matthew 4th chapter. Uh, eight words. Again, the devil... Matthew 4, starting at 8. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. Mm -hmm. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Are you with me here? Do you see a parallel here? Mm -hmm. The devil was trying to offer Jesus what already belongs to him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All you got to do is just bow down to me. You just need to bow down to me. I'm going to let you have it. <clears throat> Isn't that a joke? Amen. What is mine is being given to me as a mercy. That sounds like a government these days. Amen. Everybody is so excited about government paying them off. Guess what? You paid first. Anyway. <laughs> I shouldn't have gone to that tangent, but let's keep moving. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for uh -huh. it is written, uh -huh. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Glory be to God in heaven. Glory be to God in heaven. Mm -hmm. That whole dominion was given to mankind. Now the devil is trying to show to us... Uh, that I am only giving it to you. Yes. What is mine is being given to me and saying he's taking all the credit. Mm -hmm. And even when he is giving, he is giving me dibs and dabs. Mm -hmm. 
the raggedy clothes he's giving to me and saying, hey, Look at yourself, you're prosperous now. Look at yourself, you're better than yesterday now. Look at yourself, what a great shot you got. You were there and now you are here. And God is challenging me, that's why I have to challenge you. What is, well, I'm only thinking, oh man, my life got improved. But God is saying, hey, 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 it's not to be improved. It is where you belong to begin with. Amen. That is the place that we belong. Moses belonged to the palace even before the Pharaoh's daughter picked him up. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Jesus was the Lord of all the things before the devil offered him anything. Amen. Amen. It is not his uh, to begin with to offer it to us. He became uh, the Lord of this world by stealing. The dominion was given to Adam, not to the devil. But the devil stole it from him and trying to give it to us and make us feel like, oh man, look at us, we are making it big. <laughs> you know, we look at Moses' story and we all we can think, oh, look at that. That poor little child is finally getting picked up by the Pharaoh. He's getting into the palace. And palace was supposed to be your rightful dwelling. Amen. I receive that. When palace was supposed to be your rightful place. What happened here with Joseph? The sex said, uh, Joseph died and all his brothers and all the generation. All the generation have gone. But the children of Israel were fruitful. I'm reading the first chapter, seventh verse of Exodus. But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with them. Now, there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Who did not know Joseph. It can be deciphered two ways. <clears throat> okay. Joseph did not know it. Uh, the, the Pharaoh did not know it. What happened to you? What happened to the Jew? He should have known I belong to the palace. When you give up on what belongs to you, the enemy will encroach. The devil doesn't know what kind of authority you might have. But if you don't know what kind of an authority you have, he is going to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. He is doing that. The same thing is happening even for this nation. There have come so many leaders that did not know what the origin is. What has happened in the palace, they did not know. What has happened, how things were connected, how things were formed, what has happened, they did not know. When the people that should have been in the palace got kicked out, which is the church. Amen. The separation of the state in the church. Are you with me here? Mm -hmm. Who belongs to the palace. Now the irony is we are being sold every day. You should not touch those things. Mm -hmm. You cannot dictate our terms. You cannot tell what to do. This is a secular state. Shut up. Amen. <laughs> I agree. Are you with me here? Yes. yes. Guess what? You belong in the palace to begin with. Amen. The prayer is part of this nation.
The prayer is part of the legislation. The prayer, you know, guess what? Why do you think the fool still pray and not believe in God? It is because that is what they have done. Why do you think the Supreme Court itself has a thing in the back saying, in God we trust? Amen. You know, you still have the traces of everything that Israel, Israelites dwelt in the palace to begin with. Mm -hmm. They are not giving you no mercy. Don't you dare look at the government and the things like that. Thinking, oh man, they are making us, making room for us. No, no, no. That is yours to begin with. You let it go. Amen. Because you let it go, they are trying to give it to you, telling you, hey, this is all you got. Amen. I got it. Amen. Why should I be risking my life? Why should I not? No, why should I keep it to myself? The first and foremost freedom of speech exists because of me. Amen. That's true. Amen. Yes, Y'all are not getting it. Yes, I got it. I got it. <laughs> if the kingdom did not dwell in the palace, if the God of Israel does not dwell in the palace, there is no freedom. He is the author of freedom. They have, mankind is not subjected to freedom. The biggest slavery that mankind ever faced is the slavery of sin. Amen. It is only the Redeemer that can redeem us from the slavery of sin. Yeah. Amen. Without him being in the palace, there is no true freedom. The problem with this is we who are supposed to dwell in the palace, who belong to the palace, are giving up. Amen. There are so many levels that we are giving up on. Spiritually, you have a palace. You cannot let that go. You are letting the, 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 the realms of the devil take control of things. The devil is trying to sow discord and disunity and division and all those kinds of things when he is doing that. Racism, division, what not. He is putting everything out there. And we are just letting him do it. And every now and then we get a small prayer answered and we are like, whoa, I got it, I got it, I got it. We are too excited about the little things, forgetting the fact that we belong there to begin Amen. with. Amen. Moses was not rescued to the palace. You are not a rescue dog. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. You belong to the palace. Amen. You belong to the house. Remember, Jesus says to this Syrophoenician woman, I came, to the, uh, I came to my sons, I can't give it to the dog. But she says, I'm a dog that belongs to the palace. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm in the palace. Throw the crumbs, I'll eat. Because she wasn't going to let go of her positioning. She wasn't going to let go of his place. Of her place. I belong to the palace. I think she is like my mom for me. Because she made way for the Gentiles. Yes. She ran to the table. And she is like let me make a deal with this thing. What seemed like an insult. She converted it. For greater glory. Amen. It looked like an insult. Being called a dog. Is an insult, looks like. But she made the deal there. She sat there. She wouldn't let it go. I belong to the palace. Yes. The man have driven you out of the palace. The people have driven you out of the palace. Did you drive yourself out of the palace? The lady was able to come back to the palace because she didn't drive herself out. 
Everything around draw her out. But she said, no, 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 there is a redeemer that lives there. Let me get in. Let me get in. I don't care where I have come from. I don't care what kind of a background I am from. I don't care what kind of a gods I have worshipped. I don't care because there is a redeemer in the palace and I can run to it. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you belong to the palace. Amen. In the palace. Amen. Amen. We forget that we belong to the palace. Don't let them do their thing. It is your thing they are doing. That's right. They are always like, you know, the same thing if you look at this strategy that has happened here with Joseph and Israelites. The same thing has happened to this nation. It was the church that helped the foundation, foundation of this nation. Now the church is what is getting get pushed. You know why? The answer is right here. The ninth verse he says, And he said to his people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them. Lest they multiply and it happened in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us. So go up and out of the land. What seemed like a threat when they felt like you are a threat, what do you do? Yeah. They will control you. Okay. <coughs> Let's move on. Let's move on, right? Do you believe you belong to the palace? Yes. Amen. Somebody says I should not move on, so let's go dwell back. <laughs> In the palace is where you belong. When you know you belong to the palace, you know palace has a protocol. Palace has a way of functioning. You cannot just do whatever you want to do when you go to the palace. When you are a palace person, you have a different way. If you want to operate in the kingdom authority, it requires preparation. Because we dwell outside for too long. We don't know the ways of the palace. We dwelt in the world and the system of the world for too long that we don't know what it is to live like in the palace. We dwelt in this world too long that we forgot we belong to the kingdom of God. That's true. So it is time that we call for ourselves, we call, we put a call on us for a preparation. I need to prepare. Amen. Amen. You know, we have um, what we call as preppers or whatever. They go and have the mountains and they, they dig a hole and they have some kind of a thing. And they have food and everything. They get ready. Because there, is, there may be a doomsday coming. You know, we are no different than them. But we are not preparing for the doomsday, but we are preparing for the glory. Amen. On that day. We just sang a, a song. On that day. That day, the Lord, the day of the Lord is coming. Amen? Amen. The Lord's redemption is coming. But that day of redemption can never happen without our preparation. <laughs> People try to say this thing. God is so sovereign. He can do whatever, wherever. But I'm going to tell you something. That's a lie. Yes, he is sovereign. But he still gave you the keys. Amen. Amen. He gave you the keys. Behold, I give you the authority. I give you the power. Mm -hmm. I give you the keys to the kingdom. That's why he says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound. Whatever you release on earth shall be. We are ignorant of our authority. 
I thought of going a little southern and saying ignorant, but anyway, I don't want to make an attempt. Let's keep moving. <laughs> we are ignorant of our authority. That's true. When we are ignorant of our authority, we can never possess what belongs to us. Nobody needs to show mercy to you. Nobody needs to show mercy to you, especially the devil. Amen. Don't you dare, dare make a plea deal with the devil. Devil, please don't touch me. Please this. We are so scared of the devil than having faith in God. We are so, so scared of the viruses, so scared of all these things, we forget that greater is he that is in us than, the, than he that is in this in the world. Amen. Come on, walk in authority. We belong to the kingdom. That's why we need to prepare ourselves. The time, the hour is nigh us. It's coming, so we need to prepare. We don't prepare with the ammo of all the world, but we prepare with the weapons of the kingdom warfare. <clears throat> the kingdom warfare. Because we belong to the kingdom. Amen. We belong to the palace. Yes. Matthew 7, 6. I'm coming. Matthew 7, 6. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine. Um, let's start from the start. What is one, please? Judge not that you be not judged. Matthew 7, starting from verse 1. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Well, who is the center here? You. Because you got the authority. You judge not, for you will not be mm -hmm. judged. You measure, and you will be measured back. Keep going. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Whoa. Or how We're too busy at pointing fingers at each other, the forgetting that we all belong to the palace. Keep going. Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye and, and look, a plank is in your own eye. Mm. I think it is the message translation that says, uh, <laughs> a telephone pole is in your <laughs> eye. <laughs> Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Can you say see clearly? See clearly. It is important for us to see clearly. <clears throat> yes. When we can see clearly, we will walk. Mm -hmm. God needs us to be seeing things. God needs you to understand who got to give me these things that are mine to begin with. How dare the government give me the rights when they are mine to begin with? That's right. Are you with me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are free to worship whichever God you want. Nah. Thank you, Master. <laughs> Keep going. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. Are you, are you seeing this? Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before the swine. You are trying to have a companionship with something that is going to tear you apart. When you are supposed to dwell in the palace, you are dwelling in your emotional rut. 
You are dwelling in the swine of a pen or whatever it is. You are dwelling in places where you do not belong. That's why your vision, your purpose, your way of living life have been compromised. Have been destroyed because you are trying to dwell with the dogs and the swine when you belong to the palace. You belong to the palace. That's why they hate you so much. You are trying to confine and conform yourself to this world. They cannot handle you. What will they do? They will tear you apart. Amen. That will tear you apart. Instead, find yourself to go dwell in the palace. I belong to the palace. I belong to the palace. Hallelujah. It's enough that I'm trying to eat the pig fodder too long. We got to come back to our senses. Isn't that what the prodigal son is all about? He comes back to the senses. Finally, it hits him. Unfortunately, a lot of the church needs this. Boom. It needs to hit them that I belong to the palace. Yes. Not eating the fodder. Yes, amen. amen. Feeling so lucky and so blessed because you got yourself... Pig farrer. <laughs> what a crafty fellow that is out there trying to deceive us. That's why he's called deceiver. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he tries to tell us, hey, you got this, you got that. Uh -uh. That's mine to belong with, to begin with. The other day I was uh, 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 being so overwhelmed because I had an opportunity of something big. I was like, whoa, look at this. That in itself is a great deal that I'm even seeing this thing. Um, the God, give, God, the Spirit, God, Spirit of God gives me a correction. You belong there to begin with. Yeah. You belong there to begin with. I'm like, oh, look at this thing. I'm able to touch this. No, uh, 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 uh. The Lord is trying to say to us, you belong there. Amen. Amen. You belong there to begin with. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You belong there. I belong there. I belong Come on. There. I belong there. I belong Come on with a louder voice. I, I belong, belong there. there. Nobody needs to give it to me. I have been given the keys by the boss man. The boss man himself gave me the keys. Who are you? Who are you? That is what the dead, that, that is what Adam didn't do. He got the keys, but he didn't keep the enemies out. He was living at his mercy and his instruction. Did the Lord say, shut up, fool. You don't belong here, I belong. This garden is mine, not yours. This temple is the temple of the Holy Spirit, not yours. I'm not going to put in any garbage in this because this is the temple of the Lord. Amen. Who are you to tell me? Hallelujah. Who are you to tell me? I belong there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. John, um, um, before that, let's go to the book of Esther, second chapter, please. Because palace dwelling requires preparation. Book of Esther, second chapter. Starting at verse 12. Each young woman's turn came... Who are these young women? Jews. Slaves in that community. They were all slaves. Okay. These young women, they pulled people from all these different uh, nations that they have subdued. Oh, yeah. Okay. And these women are now being given a shot to get into the palace. Okay. They got picked. 
And when they got picked, okay, do you know you were elected? How many of you know God has elected you? Amen. 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 You have been chosen, right? Yes. God knows you have, you know God has chosen you. Yes. When you know you have been chosen, for what? To dwell in the palace. Yes. Your days of dwelling in the tents is over. Amen. Amen. The day you receive Jesus Christ into your life, your days of dwelling in the tents of shame, the tents of guilt, the tents of rejection, the tents of poverty is over. Amen. Amen. You no longer are a slave. Amen. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I'm a free man. I'm a free man. I belong to the palace. There is nobody giving me mercy. I belong there to begin with. The Lord has paid the price. He ransom, ransomed me. Amen. Yes. And ransacked the devil. Amen. Uh, keep going. Each young woman's turn came to go into King Ahasuerus after she had completed... 12 months preparation. Okay, after she had completed how long? 12 months. One shot. 12 months of preparation. You know why? This is where the Christian people are missing. We don't spend our time preparing. Mm -hmm. When you don't prepare, you don't know how to dwell. That's mm. true. That's why this is the, uh, the statement, kingdom authority, uh, no, palace dwelling or opportunity requires preparation. The palace dwelling or opportunity, palace opportunity requires preparation. You can't just walk into it. You know you're a mess. You still have them raggedy clothes you need to get rid of. When he put on the robe of righteousness, you're still trying to live in your self-righteousness. You're still trying to say, hey, 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 I'm still an outsider. Even though you belong to the palace. Man, man, look at this. You know, you know, uh, you take a back up to the palace, you're still looking at, oh, okay. Okay, let me take something with me. Let me steal something here. Because their mindset is still stuck. That's right. Amen. They're still stuck in the old ways when God has said, Hey, come to my palace. Be my palace buddies. Mm -hmm. You're trying to steal there. You're trying to nibble on this and that. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Look at this. Look what I found. <laughs> and the, that is yours to begin with. Amen. Isn't that what the father said to the prodigal son? Yes. yes. He was like, make me a servant into your house. He's like, no, no, no. This is all yours. This is yours. No matter how much we have stolen from my father, he still has a house full. Amen. That's why he didn't mind Judah stealing from his, his money, his treasury. Because there is still more for him. There is still more for us. Amen. You're trying to think the mindset of us being a slave outside, being people from outside has to change. We are no longer outsiders. We are insiders. Amen. We dwell inside. So we need to operate as an insider. When you do not do that, your authority is not working. Yes. Kingdom authority is not understood until you have a kingdom mindset. Yeah. That's my next statement. Kingdom authority is not understood until you have a kingdom mindset. That is the preparation that you and me need to subjugate to. I need to prepare. 
This woman was willing to get rid of whatever she was uh, to become what she should be. When Esther, she saw herself, I already belong there. Yes. And she wouldn't mind preparing anything and everything. Yes. She was willing to give up on anything, even her own identity. You remember the story? She wouldn't even tell them she was she belonged to a certain group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She didn't tell. Because she, she, she didn't count that. She didn't. She wasn't worried about what race we are, what color we are, what group we are, what financial bracket we. Are. She didn't care for none of that because she knew she belonged to the palace and she ran to it. Yeah. When you know you belong to the palace, you don't look for your identity in your, in your culture, in your nation, in your race, in all those kinds of things. Because you know you belong to that kingdom anyway. Yeah. Amen. I belong to the kingdom. I belong to the palace. Male, female, tall, sharp. White, black, brown, I belong to the palace. Amen. Amen. There is no Greek, not Jew. Male or female. Amen. 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 That is what the Bible says, circumcised, uncircumcised. There is none. All are welcome. Yes. All are welcome. And all have the same access. Kingdom authority. Because we have the accessor. Yes. We have the accessor. Yes. He is the one who made the way for us where there was no way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Amen. Amen. I don't have to do something else to go here. I don't have to fast thousand and one days. I don't have to sacrifice thousand and one bulls. I don't need to sacrifice myself. No matter where I am coming from, he is the way. Amen. I can get into it. Yes. yes. It's not even about getting into it. After you got into it, you need to share. You need to let go of your old things like how Bob blind Bartimaeus have done. As soon as he have heard that Jesus stood still, what did he do? He threw his clothes off. He no longer was the beggar. I belong inside. Amen. He stopped asking Jesus, give me dabs, God. Give me dabs, Jesus. Give me dabs. He wasn't asking for a mite or a penny. Instead, he says that I may see you. That I may see. They prepared themselves. Keep going, please. According to the regulations for the women, for thus were the days of their preparation apportioned, six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with perfumes and preparations for beautifying women. Thus prepared, each young woman went to the king, and she was given whatever she desired to take with her from the women's quarters to the king's palace. To what? The palace. The king's palace. When you don't understand your possession, when you don't look at it, hey, I belong there, you are always living like a servant. Mm -hmm. There is a servant mindset that is stuck in us. When God has called you his sons, his, Jesus said, I call you my friend. Mm -hmm. You know, yesterday I went to my friend's house in Minneapolis uh, area. Um, he, because he was my friend, I didn't have to knock on the door. I went in. Dwelt Amen. with him. The same place where he lived, I lived. The same place where he slept, I slept. The same food he ate, I ate. The same clothes that he had, I was offered. The same amenities that he had, I was offered. Hallelujah. Something like that even happened to us. John 15, 15, please. That's where I'm ending. 
I know I can go on. John 15, 15. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my Father I have made known to you. Glory be to God in heaven. Hallelujah. All things of his Father became mine too. Amen. Because he said, I'm going to my Father and your Father. He's saying, hey, 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 I'm giving my father to you too. You no longer have to dwell as an outsider. Be with me. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, whatever he's got, he's like, I don't even want to keep it to myself. Take it. All authority has been given to me. Now you go preach the gospel. Now you go. Go get it. Are you a go-getter now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. God is looking for somebody yes. who can go get yes. it. Go get it. Yes. Go get it. And you know what? My story, by the time I leave this earth, he went and he got it. Amen. That is what Paul said and Peter said. I finished my race of faith. I kept my faith. I fought my fight of faith because he went and got it. Amen. He went, they went and got it. When I leave this earth, that should be on my tombstone. <coughs> he went and got it. I just don't want them, my children, to inscribe it on me, but I want to achieve it. I want to get it. I want to walk in the kingdom authority. I prepare myself every day to walk in the kingdom authority because I belong there. That is not a mercy shown. It is my belonging. Don't let the devil steal and kill and destroy you. Don't let the devil deceive you trying to tell you, hey, somehow accidentally you got this dibs and you should be thankful for it. I'm not saying no to being thankful to God for the little things he is doing in our lives. But I also want you to have a mindset that you belong there. Amen. <clears throat> That's why he keeps saying the best is yet to come. Amen. Because you haven't seen the palace yet. Are you with me? Amen. As you keep going into the palace, there are layers and layers and layers. As you keep going, there is an awe out there. Even the, even the angels that were sitting in that presence of the Lord, they were going around him and they said, holy. And then they go another spin and they say, holy, because there is too much for them. Amen. Every turn of the way, there is a glory we're waiting on us. Let's Amen. get into it. Let's walk in that authority. And we belong to the palace. Amen. And let's live like the palace dwellers, not as the rag dwellers. Amen. Hallelujah. We are wasting our time doing the rag dwelling, the dirt dwelling, when you belong to the palace. Amen. This is why... Our authority is not even functioning. Kingdom authority is not understood until you have a kingdom mindset. Don't worry about your authority before you fix your mindset. That's our preparation. As we are preparing our minds, as we renew our minds according to the kingdom, not according to man mandate, that's where you belong. The palace dwelling, so let's dress up like palace people. Amen. Let's live like palace people. You know the dress up that we have, the dress code we have for the palace? The robe of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Guess what? It has been given to me for free. Hallelujah. The gift of righteousness. Amen. There is a, you, if you are allowed into the king's palace, what about White House? What about the house of uh, all these places? Legislators, you are already there. Amen. Amen. I want to leave you with that. But God needs you to prepare a kingdom of poverty. Amen. 
Don't let things happen anywhere around you because you are ignorant of your authority. There are too many God. They have this God. They have that God. Guess what? You got the keys. Amen. They can be thousand and one ones storming down those walls. They can't get in because they can't. They don't have the keys. Amen. You've got the keys. Yes. The real deal is with you. Amen. All they have is commotion. Yes. But for you, you got the keys. Just, just hang on, maybe. Hang on. I got this. I got this. You unlock. You unlock the treasures of <clears throat> glory. Let's unlock the treasures of his glory. Amen. Let's unlock the treasures of his glory. Let's unlock the treasures of his glory. Amen. Amen. You got something out of this? Yes. All right, before we go, if there is anyone out there who haven't made Jesus as their Lord, who haven't come into the kingdom, now is the time. Amen. It's a simple thing God gives. Jesus said, I am the way. And God, God the Father has said, whoever believes in my son shall be saved. And confess it with your mouth. Yes. It's so simple, yet the most powerful and the profound thing you can ever do. Amen. Amen. I'm calling you my brother and sister. Anybody out there, no matter where you are, it is time for you to make a Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord. Amen. Don't waste your time running around because you belong to the kingdom, not out there in the world of infested, the world that is infested with sin. Amen. When you have the palace protection Amen. of righteousness, Amen. peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I invite you. If that is someone whom you want to come in, if you are responding to this invitation, please repeat this prayer with me. Father, Father I, believe I believe Jesus is your son. Jesus is your son. He died for my sins. He died for my sins. I, am a I am a sinner. Forgive my sins. Forgive my sins. Receive, me Receive me into your kingdom. I belong to you. From now, on, From now on, I will follow you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you made that commitment, let us know so we may rejoice with you. God bless you. Pastor Warren, receive our offering, please. Amen. God is good. Amen. All the time, right? Okay, let's stand. Let's get ready to close our service. Let's prepare our hearts for our tithes and offerings. I'll give you a minute to get up. Get ready. You should already jump into your feet. You should be excited about giving Amen. to God, right? Amen. You should, every breath you have, everything you have, you owe it to him. Amen. Amen. God is good. If you're giving online, it's covenantfusion.com. You can click on the give button. And we thank you in advance, whoever's giving right now, whoever gave. We open up our hearts gratefully and we give with joy. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. Amen. You know, I love the, the palace. Amen. Boy, oh boy. I don't know about you. I, I dream about palaces, but I'm really dreaming about the palace that God has for us when we leave here. Amen. John 14, 2. John actually said, he goes, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Isn't that cool? Amen. Many mansions prepared for you. But why don't we have a mansion now? You know, I left this up on the, no, let's go back. Go Click back, back on that screen. Uh, okay. Is it back there? Put that back up on the screen. No, go back one more time. There it is. The palace dwelling opportunity requires preparation. Amen. Put that up online too. It requires preparation. And it's preparation through his word. It doesn't just be given to you. Yeah. You gotta be prepared. How do you get prepared? In anything you do, you want a good job, you gotta be prepared when you go in. You have to have some experience or you don't get the good job, right? right. You know, I want the palace mentality. I'm going to tell you this. There is no double wides in, the, in heaven. I can tell you that. Amen. He said, John says there's many mansions for you. And, and it, but the Lord's prayer also says it shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why are we not living the same economy in heaven here? Because we're not prepared. We, if we want to be prepared to live in the palace here, you have to do something. That's Amen. setting the preparation. In, in Malachi 3, God says to bring in the whole tithe into the storehouse. Your preparation is to sow. 
Yeah. If you don't sow, yeah. you're not preparing for a harvest. You can't yeah. get it. You'll stay in the double wide instead of the palace on earth. Amen. There's nothing wrong with it if you have a house or you have, but you know something, I really want the palace because God said it's available for me here, not when I get there. It shall be done. I want to be blessed now, not later. I want to be blessed to be a blessing. Boy, I, I love the authority that God gives us today, that we have the right to be prepared, and he gives us opportunities to prepare. So are you prepared right now to give? Amen. I don't know about you. I've always been prepared before I come to church to give. If I'm writing a check, I wrote it ahead of time. I don't wait, and then I debate about it. Well, if you're debating, you're not prepared, and then you struggle. Stop struggling, please, today. Get prepared. You have the authority given to you. I'm, I, I believe right now, plowless, dwelling, forget the dwelling, opportunity requires preparation. Read it. It's on your screen. Write that down. This week, start getting prepared for what God's called you to do. Spiritually, physically, financially, relationally, mentally, emotionally. All these areas requires preparation, especially in your finances. Sow the seed today that you know that will give, be bringing your harvest tomorrow. Amen? Amen? Boy, that's a word in season for somebody. You're struggling. Stop. God's already giving you the answer. You don't have to do it no more. That's right. Amen. Come on. Join the crowd that's going in the right direction, not the back. We got the elevator go to the top sometimes, people. We stop staying in the bottom. We're not bottom dwellers. We are supposed Amen. to be the one feeding Amen. people, not Woo! looking to be fed. Amen? Amen. Oh, that's enough. I'm, I know you got the message this time. Amen. Boy, if I have to say anything else, I'm going to get fired up, and i got to close this down. Amen? So but I'm going to pray for you right now. If you're giving, thank you. Father, I thank you for the opportunity. Father, that you said that we can dwell in the palace and get out of the fields and come into your house, Lord. I pray right now for each and every person that heard this message today that they will bring it into action, Father, and be prepared. Right now as we sow, Lord, it's preparation for the harvest to come in, Father. I pray for those who have businesses that there will be an overflow of people calling them, coming to them, asking for their services. Those who have jobs and advancements are being given without even knowing that it's coming coming, Lord, that this week will be the opportunity for bosses to call you in and say, sit down. I want to just reward you for just doing and going beyond what other people never do. And that people that don't have a job, favors coming right now because you're going to prepare and sow a seed so God can prepare the, the footsteps of your path this week to walk into the right place for the right opportunity. Yeah. I believe right now that overflow and abundance is coming not into your house, but into God's house because of like-minded people. And I pray, Father, that you will bless each and every person with overflow as we give in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yes. Amen. Let's give. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Yes, Lord, we glorify you. We thank you. And especially right now as we get ready to close out with our confession of faith, I'm believing right now that everybody is going to keep backing us with these United America tour, not just with your finances, but with your prayers, with your thoughts. Every day I'm asking you to rally in the spiritual realm, not the worldly realm. And you put Pastor Shree in this church in the forefront of your prayers because we need to touch this nation like never before. Yeah. He's committed to go. We have to be committed to send him financially and prayerfully. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So we can make a difference. This will be one nation under God again. And then we will never have to be talking about this again. This is a year of change in this nation Amen. to be brought back to where it was. The Bible, it stands behind this pulpit, and this is where this nation was started, and this is how it's going to fin finish yeah. strong yeah. in one nation under God. Amen. Well, thank you. Let's get ready. Our confession of faith should be on the screen, and on the count of three, we will confess it and close the service. Ready? One, two, three. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing. We are filled for His glory. God bless you. See you Wednesday night Bible study. Bye-bye.